All right, so the Callisto Protocol is actually a game that I'm really, really looking forward to, right? I mean, I love Dead Space. I'm very excited for this game. It's coming out soon. So I was a bit surprised whenever I saw this headline that its season pass includes new player death animations. And I guess one of the things that I've been thinking about for a long time is how games keep on getting sliced and diced up, right? And just seeing, you know, the survival horror game has been marketed on its gory death sequences and then seeing the death sequences are in fact a bit of DLC, that feels really weird, especially when it, it, it's just death animation. It's not like a new gameplay mode, right? Well, we actually went into the whole situation. The director of the game has even responded to this stuff, and it is fairly interesting, even though, I mean, imagine, imagine one of the new Tomb Raider games, the new era of those came out and just put the Lara death sequences, which like in that game were pretty notable, just put half of them behind a paywall. That's what it would feel like, right? Turns out that may not necessarily be everything true. And uh, how you actually talk about your game, how you position it is in fact extremely important because stories will pick up in much the way that this VGC one did. So it's got a digital deluxe edition, right? I mean, come on, what doesn't? Now, the things that it features, broadly speaking, seem grand, right? Um, one of them is a skin collection. We're kind of used to that. There's then the Contagion bundle, which has a new mode with reduced ammo and health drops, uh, customized difficulty, and permadeath. Es essentially, it's like a hardcore mode. So the hardcore mode is a whole DLC, and with that hardcore mode comes 13 new Jacob Death animations uh, and a skin collection. That's what got people. Just the idea of, what, I, I, I don't get all the death animations, right? Now there's also a wave-based uh, game mode, which for a game like this, totally reasonable and fine. And then a story DLC, which, I mean, yeah, I look forward to that. It's just the way that apparently we're being sold these death animations. And I think in much the same way that horse armor in Oblivion felt really bizarre to people as a thing you had to pay for, that has, uh, that's really happened again. And I think people would immediately go to the fear of, oh, wow, d does this mean that, like, even for a single player game, there are going to be multiple versions of that? One of them may have less animations, which to some people, you know, having more animations and stuff like that to vary up the experience would count as a pretty core piece of game polish, right? I mean, it's pretty annoying when you see animations repeat and repeat in a game. So all of these things feel really bad and feel really bizarre. And then, of course, there's the way that it was framed uh, by the press, which totally does make sense, um, right? That just has people thinking, wow, they're paywalling animations. You know, what will they do next? Now, this is a little bit rough after a bit of a Twitter flub from uh, Glenn Schofield, the director, a few months ago, and then uh, kind of us knowing that the whole team is basically just crunching the hell out of the game, um, you know, leading up to its uh, release. So it has got some criticism. Then also a little bit more criticism because Denuvo is being implemented on Steam for launch, which feels pretty bad, especially in an era where a lot of PC hardware is actually pretty damn expensive. So things that can often come to the detriment of performance, I mean, that feels awful, right? I mean, when you buy a game, you want to have confidence that you can run it, and Denuvo has a long and proven history of getting in the way of people being able to run games well. So that's weird. And this all feels, I think, double weird, because we all remember how EA basically kind of killed Dead Space 3. I mean, Dead Space 3 as a game still has plenty of good things in it, right? Like, as a game that the developers made. But it had all of its crazy shit going on with, uh, you know, it being a single-player game with currency microtransactions used in the crafting loop. Imagine trying to monetize the crafting loop of a survival horror game where that's a core thing. What absolute madness. So then that's just got people thinking, why does a single player game need a season pass? Why can I not get the full game? And why are you cutting content from the main game, the animations, and selling it back to the player? Right, well, there is a bit of an opposing viewpoint here. One that I think is probably actually grounded in a lot of truth. And it's something that definitely educates us on, I think, the level of healthy cynicism that consumers have. 
I mean, going back even to the uh, was it the Prothean DLC of Mass Effect Three, where that like was literally like a case of on disc DLC. Um, was it Proteans? I forget. Oh, I've forgotten the name. You know, the progenitor race in in Mass Effect Three, anyway. And uh, they were extremely important because they were the people who were involved in the previous Reaper cycle, and that was made day one on disc DLC, and that felt so bad to people. And we see the industry get worse over time, so obviously there is fear there. And essentially it turns out that uh, work on the season pass has not been finished yet, right? Uh, these new death animations basically are not part of the $70 game. That's the official line. Here's the tweet from Glenn uh, Schofield. To be clear, we're not holding anything back from the main game for the season pass. We haven't even started to work in this content yet. It's all new stuff we've been working on in the new year or we will be working on in the new year, fans have been asking for even more deaths, so we're making it a priority next year. Now, I think that's probably reasonable enough. Now, perhaps some work in some of these animations uh, has been done. It would be rough if anything, you know, PR-wise, if anything ended up being data mined. But overall, yeah, I do actually believe this statement. I don't think he is out and out lying. It just does say something, though, that essentially what these uh, death animations are. They're skins. They are essentially cosmetic DLC um, in a way, right? Because, I mean, you know, the mechanic is you've died. This is just putting more juice into that, more variety, more options. So, in a way, it is just them giving you more later, and it is a cosmetic DLC. I think it's just that we're really trained that, like, animations are part of the core game, and skins are a thing that can be slapped on afterwards. We're generally, I think, not quite used to animations being treated in this way, because, uh, well, generally they haven't been. I mean, the other place where that is done is games like Overwatch, maybe Valorant, uh, Apex, where you see emotes be monetized, and an emote, a death animation, I mean, they're displayed in a different context, but fundamentally, they're, they're, just, they're an animation. That's what they are, right? So it is a funny little situation. Now, as for the rest of the DLC, I mean, having these two uh, gameplay modes which obviously, you know, you, you do have to actually do quite a lot of work. Even for a hardcore mode, you've got to ensure your uh, your resource uh, loop, your game economy, that all those things are balanced. That is actually quite a lot of work. Trust me, we've been doing a lot of that recently for the Pale Beyond, our game, which, uh, you know, has resources and decisions, and we need to make sure that we hit the right balance of difficulty, because if we screw that up, you know, we're kind of fucked. Um, and if we ended up doing a hardcore mode at a later point of time, that would mean our team going back to the game and updating and changing things and having to rebalance the whole thing, which, you know, in some cases could be, you know, weeks of, of work, right? Pretty intense work uh, from some people. So that's essentially what's going on. We have a situation where these things have been scoped out. I think with a horde mode and a hardcore mode, those are almost certainly what you would call very economical things. Because while they do take work to get over the finish line, it's not as much work as a full bit of story DLC. Now, the thing there is, I'm kind of more likely to pick this game up knowing that there is story DLC coming along the way. And that's the weird thing then about, about season passes, about launch uh, content, and how we think about things. I'm sure you've seen this... Uh, this dank meme <laughs> be posted around, right? The idea, you know, the original game's the burger, then maybe you get fries and a drink, and those are the expansion packs. But now it's a situation where it feels like, you know, you you get the bun, but everything else is DLC, and you're nickel and dimed. That's certainly how gaming feels as compared to the days where, you know, you buy StarCraft 2, what's that, Heart of the Swarm comes out? You buy that. You buy Diablo 2, oh, the expansion's out, you buy that, and that's it, right? I think in many ways, the way that things are going right now is definitely for the worst. I think that this is a situation, though, where these developers, uh, this company, has essentially tried to do a cosmetic DLC, but have ran up against player expectations and game industry norms that animations in a single player game, that that's just not the sort of thing that customers actually consider to be paid cosmetic content. It undoubtedly is that, 
But the way that we feel about it is that it is a very core part of uh, of the game experience, right? Like, I'm sure most people would expect, oh, so the new modes is a DLC. Surely that'll come with a free update that has uh, maybe some of those other nice little things like the animations, right? Because surely those animations are just an improvement to the base game, not a new thing that I can go and play. And I guess that's where we come down to a whole big discussion about how consumers actually see value. Some new death animations like those can happen to you, right? The game mechanics impose that death in you because you failed the mechanics. And I think that's something that players fundamentally feels pretty damn different from character customization via a paid cosmetic. So I think that's why we ended up seeing such a... I mean, such a visceral response to this kind of thing, which is sort of funny considering we're talking about extremely gory, visceral death animations. But ultimately, I think this is a case where, you know, if we take them at good faith that they just thought, right, we'll, we'll put work into some new death animations. And see, for a game like Callisto Protocol, by the way, man, animations for games like that are so expensive, right? Like, so, so, so expensive. So doing 13 animations, that actually is a serious amount of work. So to the developers putting in that work who know it's a lot of work because it'll literally take them weeks and weeks and weeks to do, this feels like something that it's like, well, yeah, we had X amount of people working for X weeks to, uh, eight weeks to deliver this. Surely this is a thing we can then put in our season pass. That makes sense. And th most of this work will be done after the game comes out. But it just rubs up the wrong way with consumer expectations because we consumers have been taught to be cynical, right? Like all the instances of on-disc DLC, um, you know, and that ranges from your Mass Effect 3s. Was it Street Fighter V had a hell of a lot of stuff, but thankfully they were able to really image rehab that game by doing pretty damn good development work, I think, in that franchise afterward. So overall, that's my analysis of this situation, right? It's just one of consumer expectations. We have a bucket of expected things and death animations, even though they maybe actually would take quite a bit more work to implement than some new skins. They just don't fall within the bucket of items that consumers are really expecting. And I think when we track this forward, we then think, hang on a second. Since games started charging us for skins, it feels like we haven't got as good skins in games or cosmetic options by default. What if this catches on? You could then worry that Callisto Protocol will do this and will do it reasonably and that there's no foul play by the developers and it's all done in good faith, which I actually do believe. But then people might think, well, okay, but if they get away with it, what's another company going to do? Do you want to track five years? Because we do have a little bit of a trend line of business practices getting more nickel and dimey over time well then do we worry that oh okay it's it's going to get worse multiplayer games like already you know they'll have um sometimes like animation stuff that is behind a paywall the idea of it in a single player game or just anything outside the traditional free to play like you know big free to play game Again, it's funny how we can track so many things back to Overwatch with uh, selling people like highlight intros and stuff back in, you know, back in the past, right, with the loot boxes. But that's, the, I think that's the worry. That's the worry. I would definitely say this is probably one, you know, to, to try and engage with them in, in good faith. I don't think they're trying to screw people over. I think they probably just thought to themselves, yeah, we could do a bunch of skins, but actually the death animations have really caught on with the community. Like the people who are working in socials for that team, they'll undoubtedly, you know, have like a community, you know, like a dashboard, right? Of all the different tweets. They'll know what aspects of their game, like what pillars of their gameplay are the things that actually sell the game to players, right? They'll know that see things spread so they probably thought okay well i mean some skins would be fine but people are really talking about these death animations wouldn't it be cool if we put the new hardcore mode in and we had some really hardcore death animations to go with it that would feel cool to our players and i think that probably is the decision that they actually made it's just that we have been trained to be cynical and we're rightly fearful that maybe the next ubisoft uh, you know assassin's creed thing because those games have been pioneering in the single player as a live service, you know, single player with many microtransactions. They've been pioneering that for a long time. So you might start to to kind of wonder, oh, okay, this is, this is kind of weird. Because when people expect to get animations in DLC, it's because they've got a new ability, a new weapon, a new character, not just a new death that can happen, right? 
So essentially, there you go. This is a confluence of things. And then marketing, finding out that, okay, the players really care about the death animations. They're, of course, going to market the new death animations as a feature. And I think that's how we got to uh, to this particular place that we're in, right? So it's this is just one of those things where I I feel like it's an optics issue, frankly. It's an optics issue. I guess that's why Glenn felt the need to come out to, you know, over to Twitter and to actually say all of those things. So it's a tricky little thing. I would say, though, this is a good example of you do not need to buy a game on launch. You know, a game like this, like Callisto Protocol is going to be as good on day one. Well, it's probably going to be better at like day 300 or day 400, because you'll probably be able to get a discounted bundle. And there's a chance that Denuvo will have been removed by then, thus saving you money, getting you more content. And uh, of course, not having Denuvo potentially get in the way of your performance. And I think all these things are a bit tricky because it's, you know, it's kind of training us to be patient gamers. And for us, that can be good, but also it can be kind of tricky for them because if they train us too much to be patient gamers, it's going to impact day one sales. And that could kind of change up some of the economics of the industry. Man, it sure is something, isn't it? For me personally, with a game like this, if I hear there's going to be story DLC, I'll be more likely to play it because I will feel like the investment of my time into the characters and the world will be paid off because there will be some DLC, right? Like take Mass Effect Andromeda, not the best game in the universe, definitely has plenty of issues, but I would have felt that if it had three or four story DLCs that were good, that maybe some of that could have been recouped. I still was okay enough with that game to play through the entire thing. The ending was disappointing, but if anything, the ending at least set up for good DLC. But the fact that there was no firm commitment on that, I think really shook people's confidence. And right now, I think we're very, you know, we're very risk focused. We're very downside aware. It's a really tough economy. Um, games are sometimes not treating us the best as customers. And that means we're going to see those negatives. And anything that shakes confidence is going to be magnified. It's going to be amplified. And I think that's something we see in the broader games discourse these days. Take with your Overwatch 2, your Halo Infinite, those situations. So basically, that's my takeaway. Patient gamers continue to get a fantastic deal and continue to not have to deal with all of these things that end up being breaking news because usually they're resolved to a better degree or at least you have full transparency of the situation once some time has passed. As for me personally, I am going to get this game near launch and that is because it does to me, assuming it's good, represent a fairly hefty value because Christmas holidays me and my partner are getting into a lot of a lot of horror content these days. So for me, it does make sense. And I feel like if it's maybe a 12 hour long game at full price, that the two of us will get enough value out of that. But that's everything for me leaning in favor of this game. If you're sitting there on the sidelines, you're perfectly happy to wait. I suppose for me, the final thing that I'll need to see is that the death animation stuff in the normal game is, is grand and that there's not, you know, a low quantity to the point where it detracts from the experience that's the case, then this DLC will feel bad. But if it is the case that that's a game that I could play, and if I never read this news, I would never even know about any of this, and I wouldn't have a problem with the animations, well, then I think that would just be proof that this is fully a case of just iffy marketing running against player expectations that have been trained to be pretty cynical by an industry with a bunch of fat cats that kind of nickel and dime us. So that's my take on the whole issue. I'd love to know what you think, though, so let me know down below. And, uh, well, there's plenty of content on the channel, so I'll see you again tomorrow.